Sure. That was a new sentence for you. Blah, blah. Okay, thank you. Um, hello. Welcome to the session. So it's, um, it's about Jenkins, Docker, and testing. So what I will uh, give you is, is a bird's eye view. So um, we are working uh, in the project longer for setting up a, um, a system for uh, our testing. And um, this session is, uh, uh, was supposed to be the result of all this work, but we are, didn't finish really the work. So uh, the session is only the bird's eye view of our plan. So we cannot really um, show you something that's worked at the end, that's working. Um, so as I said, it's, it's the bird's eye view um, about Jenkins and Docker and testing. So let us start with Jenkins. Um, who knows what is Jenkins? Okay, that's good. Um, Jenkins is a continuous integration server. Great word. Um, I will explain what it is later, in a few minutes, not really later. So Jenkins is, is open source. Um, Jenkins is in some way extendable with plugins. We know plugins, um, so you can put some functionality in it. And it's um, written in Java. Blah. Okay. So continuous integration. So what is what is continuous integration? Um, the first question I'm, I'm always trying to, to ask myself is, is why. So why I need this? So I need um, continuous integration for um, for better quality for the product. So the product Joomla should be better. It's not really good when we um, when we ship a version and have to ship the next version two days later because we fucked up something. So that's not really a good idea. So we need to do um, quality. Also, what can we do with continuous integration is that we get fast responses on changes. So someone changed something, and with our continuous integration service, we get a fast response if we break something. Bless you. Um, and we need uh, continuous integration because the developer are lazy. So you change something, oh, it should work. I do it, and then everything goes south. That's not really good. So we need this for this. And um, the last bit is uh, we need to eliminate side effects. So you change something here, and usually you think it, there should not be really so uh, many side effects. Um, but with our continuing integration service, if you have a good testing, then we see, oh, there are side effects, and we need to eliminate that. And our continuous integration service tells us, oh, there is something wrong. So there are a couple of problems we can run into. Um, it's software development. You have a uh, thousand possibilities to run into problems. And I will um, list a few. Um, to, um, to allow you not to run into these problems and um, to skip all the bad parts and thinking. So the first problem is we need to know what is right. That's a problem. So what is right? Um, we need to, a system that tells us, or we can define, how a system should behave. So what is the right functionality the system or this part of the system has? And the other way around is also very important. Um, what the system should not behave. So that's the why part. So what is right and um, to find this. How can, we, how can we find out if the system behaves right? So um, if, we, if we do normal development, so we develop something and we say, okay, um, this uh, function should do 
add two numbers, and when I put two numbers in it, then they should, uh, the, I put one and one in, they should come two. That's something you look at it, look at the results. So it's testing, it's manual testing. So testing is a, um, is, is a key to, um, to have a way to have an automatic way to find out if the system does what it should do. And there are a couple of, of testing types. And we go through this testing types. So who, who knows a bit more about testing? Maybe hands up. OK. Oh, that's, that's a lot. Um, um, so one test type is unit testing. The unit testing is, is something you um, test um, really a small bit of your application. And in, in, um, in, in the best way or in the, in the best situation, you can do this totally isolated. So you have no um, um, connections to other classes and, and parts of the application. Um, so unit tests are, typically you test a class, class that do something, maybe adding two numbers. So and you can do, you can make a test. Um, you say, okay, when I add two numbers and the numbers are one and one, there should be two at the result. So you make a search and say, okay, I expect when I do this, that is that, that that is the result. So then you, can you compare this and say, okay, my system behaves right. Um, you can do the other way around. You say, um, I have two and four and, um, uh, say, um, that two and four is six. Okay. Um, and, um, then you can say, okay, six is the right result, but, um, it shouldn't be not, not six. Then you do it as a Oh, okay. This is garbage. Okay. We, get, we go to the next one. So, uh, the point for unit testing is small pieces of your software isolated testing. That's a way. Next text, testing type is functional testing. So um, the idea of this is that it's not really one part of your system, but it's more than one part. Two, three parts, two classes. You're testing how they work together. So you need a bit, bit more. And if you can isolate this system or these two classes, then it's pretty good. And then you can test if this works really good together. Can it be I? Can something else? So this type of testing involves more of your system. And the third type is um, acceptance tests. Um, you can name it acceptance test. You can name it um, uh, system tests that are both same. So the um, um, acceptance comes from this idea that it's you um, implement a feature, and to accept this feature, it has to pass this test. That's the acceptance test for feature. Um, have you spoke this morning about system testing? That's pretty much the same. So um, when you when you look from from uh, top to down, then then more you came down, more of your system is involved. So when you do acceptance or system tests, then uh, the browser is involved. There is a network system, net, network involved. There's a lot of pieces of your application are involved. Um, that's the way. And maybe you can. It's not easy to to spot that uh, the more of your system is involved the longer tests and more resources are needed to do the test. So problem number two, slow responses. It doesn't really make so much sense when you are doing continuous integration and you make a small fix on something and uh, the response that, uh, that something was wrong comes three hours or a day later. So you usually have forgotten what, what, I, what I changed. So, and when you, when you make more changes, 
um, then you to figure out what was really wrong is not so easy to spot. So the sooner you get a response about your change, the better it is. So what's um, what are the reasons for, for slow responses? So one, one reason can, can be that tests taking too long. So you wrote a test and this test does a couple of things and it, but it takes time and it runs and runs and runs and runs. It takes long. So that's one, one reason. Um, another reason is, uh, you have, uh, back seg bad segmentation. So your tests are not split into uh, into um, parts um, that you can run them parallel. That's also a reason. So, and you do it in the wrong order. I will come to this point later. And also to this one later, uh, the process is not planned well. So, if you look at these four um, bullet points, and you can see that the three, uh, so why is this bold? The point is bold, but, uh, okay, that's, that's crazy. That's key, that, that, that's keynote. So, the, this three process not planned well, wrong order, and back segmentation. So, that, uh, that is something you have, you, you have in your hands, so you can do this better. So, um, test taking too long. You did all your best to, to make the test, uh, work and test what you like to test. So, it's not so much you can do. We come to problem number three. Um, one is too many variants of your tests. And I will show you all and not, uh, so I will show you all. So you see there are a couple of PHP versions at the moment for, for Joomla. Um, you have uh, many, many PHP configuration settings you can do, um, memory limit very low, and. and and all this, all these ideas you can have. So you can, uh, uh, different databases, you can different web servers, there are more. And you have, uh, Joomla 2.5, 3.3, 3.4. Um, I didn't put Joomla 4 in it, but, uh, it's not there really. Um, okay, so come and catch me in a few minutes. So I have to, um, do with it. So one thing, and that's, uh, we come more to the, to the solution part is, uh, I will tell you a bit about Docker. Not so much. Who knows Docker? Who knows virtual machines? That's more. Okay. Good. So Docker is, um, some kind of service virtualization. So you, uh, you make a Docker container for Apache for example, or you make a Docker container for MySQL. So, so the words are Docker. So why Docker is cool? So, and, um, so I, you might guess I'm a fan of this. Um, when you see this, that, that's a normal virtual machine. It's a big box and there all services are in and, um, it's doing the job and it's doing Apache, it's doing MySQL, it's doing PHP, it's do, do all the stuff um, you need to know, you, you need. Um, so um, Docker, in this case, is, uh, you, have, you have also a virtual machine. But on top of this virtual machine, you set up, set up containers. So the containers here share a bit of the virtual machine and uh, the good part of this is that you uh, can run a lot of more containers on a server than you can run virtual machines. Uh, so you use your hardware better. And uh, one thing that is all very cool with, with, with Docker is they are booted very fast. So they are, they are, they are up in no time. So you can, can run a lot of Dockers in, um, in, in a short period of time. And then they do the, the job they are supposed to do. Um, and now we come to, to the process. The process of, um, um, of your testing. 
of your continuous integration. The first thing I would tell you is um, stop at the first failure. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> Keynote you know, is kidding me here. Okay. Um, so stop at the first failure. Why? Um, I don't know how, ma how many people contributed to, to Joomla. Really to contributing with, with GitHub, so sending pull requests in. Hands on. Uh, okay. So how many of you have got a uh, response or, or have written uh, committed to make Travis happy? How many of you? Okay, cool. So usually it is because you have forgotten a uh, space, a comma, or whatever. So this small, small problem. So, and because Travis runs through all of this, rolls through all unit tests, it usually takes 10, 10 minutes to get a response. But to know that you uh, had some coding styles to check this needs, I think, a minute to give you this response. So um, when, you, when you do these cheap things first, like code style checkings or syntax checks, then you get, as developer, and you stop when, when it fails, then you get a fast response, and you get, oh, fuck, so I can't do this here, and put comma, and all that. Oh, maybe I should run, run uh, code styling checks locally. Uh, maybe not. OK, I committed. Ah, uh, shit. You know, that's, that's what happens. So that should be the first thing in the process, get you a fast response, do the cheap things first, and then go to the next part. And uh, that's usually the unit tests. They, you're testing all isolated a part of the system, and that means that there are also fast. So um, I'm, not pre I'm not sure how, how long the unit tests run on my machine. I think it's, it's uh, five minutes or something. Um, so when you do this, then and unit tests run through, all the good. If you have functional tests, we don't have this at the moment really in, in Joomla function tests. We have some unit tests and we have uh, system tests. So there are, it's not really something in between. So then the exceptions tests come into, they take very long. Um, and, to make, and to make this really work, so, and here fits together, is you need to split your acceptance tests into chunks and let, let them run parallel on different Docker containers. Then you can speed up your whole process. When, um, how, how long takes a, takes a system, system test? Two hours, I think. Okay, so on my machine it's three hours, but I have a big, a big one. So it's uh, two, two, or two or three hours, something. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you split this, let us go from two hours. So and we, we target that we maybe will get a response within 10 minutes. Then you have to split it in, in uh, 12 parts, if you can. So system tests are a bit, bit complicated because you need to install Joomla first, and then you can run the system tests. So it's uh, to create your world to make the test will take some time. So that's, um, so then, then let them run in, run in parallel and then you can save time and get a better response time and, and, you are, uh, and you get better responses and faster responses on your changes. Okay, the Joomla testing setup. So um, thankfully to one and one, that's well, not, not the reason why I use this, this one and one example for unit tests. So, but thankfully to one and one, they, um, they gave up, gave us um, three root servers. And what we did is we um, have set up uh, a Jenkins master, and we have set up two Jenkins slaves. So it's, it's not really complicated to do this. So because the only, you have uh, to install the Jenkins master, and the Jenkins slave 
it must only be a Unix and usually Unix installation. Then you need a root password, and then you can add this as slave, and Jenkins will handle the rest of, for you and uh, uh, can start processes and, and other things on the, sla uh, on the slaves. So, what are the steps? So, it runs this way that when, when a pull request is made on, on our repository, that um, GitHub um, contacts the Jenkins server and um, starts a process. That's the thing what happens. Jenkins picks up this change and then he um, clones the repository for exactly this commit. Copy it to, to the machine um, and then it's more or less done. So then it's uh, then we will start a, uh, a simple Docker machine for the code styling checks to have this out of the way. And then checking for syntax errors, for example. So you can PHP minus L for checking on, uh, on syntax errors. You can do this for different PHP versions. So that's that's easy easy to do. Next up will be our unit tests, and then we will run our system tests in, in parallel, and the last thing we will do is, is maybe do some code metric calculation to have a view what we changed in the time and, and uh, how is our um, uh, code coverage and all this, the things so that we have uh, some values where we can say this is uh, how our system or how our code um, uh, is getting better. So you can you can do a lot with, with, with code metrics. I, I want to go into this. Is That's, I think, uh, uh, also a talk about this one. So, and, and the last thing we need to do is, is then combine results and, and set the state in, in GitHub, and then we are done with, with, with our tests. So, and when we, um, and so, and it's, it's, the process is designed that you can, um, go out of this process at every, uh, line so that you get fast results and don't need to really, so the system test will, will, uh, will have a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh um, will need a lot of resources. Um, so we, I didn't have this on my on my slides, but for the system test, what makes it also a bit complicated is uh, you need to test also with different uh, screen resolutions and all the stuff. So there is when we have uh, our our system test maybe split in 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 20, uh, 20 pieces. So then we have to run it this 20 pieces for different screen resolutions, and that will take a time. So that's the process and. Um, so I will we'll end up with with three points with three points. I would give you on your way, um, and it is a long way to do it. So um, I think Javier is working on the system testing for two years or three years, and uh, we had um, unit testing, um, uh, unit tests, uh, code sprints, and worked on this. So it's going. Uh, it takes a long time to to uh, to do it, and uh, but you never will be finished with something when you don't start. So start with with doing it. Start doing it for your components, for small pieces you have. I know it's it's really hard um, with Joomla uh, to do unit testing because uh, there, if you if you use JTable, you are include. Pretty much everything of the system in your in your test, and that's is not really fun. So make isolated tests in in, uh, in Joomla is not really so easy. But finally, when you when you finish or when you on the way and see some of your results, I think you will sleep better for any change. So and um, so that's exactly the the moment you can all wake up. 
and uh, I'm finished with my presentation, and I thank you for it, for coming in. So if you have questions, then I, I will give my best to answer. So. Uh, No, it's not really planned. So, uh, yeah. Hmm? yeah. It would be good to do it, yeah, for sure. So. Sometimes, you know, there could be like two lines of code, that's just all the code, and no one can Yeah, I know. That's, that's, that, we, we know this, yeah. I can remember some, some uh, changes that made it a bit slower. Yeah, it would be good. So, um, um, but I think when we when we go a bit further with the code metrics things, so maybe then we are uh, doing some um, um, t uh, checking how long something takes. So maybe there we can figure out a bit bit of this. So, but it's not really planned okay. at the moment. Have you already tried to uh, visualize? No, I didn't because it's it's um, for for uh, for our purpose it doesn't make any sense to do it. So um, we we need really we need a couple of machines. We know that we have big system tests, uh, and um, so I didn't try it. I know it's 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 possible to do. Um, uh, there are a couple of packages out. Uh, with 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 uh, Docker containers and Jenkins in it, so um, I think it's easy to do it. But for our purpose, uh, for Joomla testing, uh, we need really. I don't think we will really. Uh, we need more <laughs> more machines. I think we will not. We not. The three machines will not be enough. So more questions. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah. 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 It's it's not it's not so easy. It's uh um. Well, maybe David can can say more. He, he set up the the, uh, the Docker container for the system testing. Um, uh, I think there are a couple of examples, and and um, yeah, that's that's the bad part of the internet. So there's so many people trying and changing a bit on it, and then you have a new version. So when you look for on Docker Hub for for a specific uh, service, then you get results over results over results. So and it's that's not really easy to find the the the, uh, the right container. So what I do, I, I try to find someone that fulfills my needs. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know where I go. Where, 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 Yeah. 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 Because uh, Docker Compose does all the job, and uh, you specify the, the ports and the links between the machines, and then uh, you submit the Docker file. I think they are pretty new. So they are they had uh, there's a Docker uh, um, to to make the Docker containers very early, and then they are at the moment I think they are working on on all this management stuff uh, tools uh, to make it better for people to set it up. So. I think it's Ansible is also it. Mm. 
you know, I, it's it's not really three, four machines. It's a bit bit more. I think with all the PHP versions we we need and and all the stuff. So I think we will have a, a lot more machines. So more questions I can try to answer. No, it's an operating system model with operations. So you can yeah. use the kernel first yeah. both of them. So you don't get like hypervisor to run the virtual machine, yeah. but at every container uses the kernel and the launches of the kernel or yeah. the centralized or the local kernel or whatever you have to combinate it. And that's why it's super easy to spin it up. Like you need like three seconds to spin it up because it's just a process in the process here. If you log in as root on those virtual so, machines and you type yes, the yes command, you will see the containers as yeah. separate processes. So they it's, are, they, they it's on top of this. Own networking devices now. And we're using C root in order to manage low yeah. and higher order computers. Yeah, so it's it's like this. So it's one virtual machine and then you put it on, on top. More questions? I, yeah. Uh, you said that. Yeah, I can say you do. Oh, here. Yeah. So, so uh, tomorrow we have a session in in the make it happen, um, and we are trying to do writing more tests and 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 stuff like like this. So, if you like to join, to join, find uh, have you tomorrow. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it depends. So if you, if you try to um, to test, for example, for different MySQL versions, as example, so then it might be easier to have uh, to have a, a container with Apache and your PHP, but. Uh, you separate the MySQL and can connect to this one. So I think it depends on your on your um, situation. So thank you very much.